All right. So without further ado, if you want to sponsor this, let me know. You can always message me and we'll make it happen. Um, so, but I like to start off with a couple fonts that are, uh, provide a little bit of levity during this time. And uh, with, that, with that said, uh, well, let's call them Spring Photo Fun. I was able to change this because we are, yes, finally into spring. And my wife and I and the kids, we've been taking walks and we're here in Ladera Ranch. And, and I don't know, we were talking about it. And uh, my sister-in-law was talking about it along with my wife uh, today. And uh, I don't know, are the, are the birds louder? It, just, it, it certainly seems like it, it, they're a lot louder out there. Uh, just a beautiful thing, uh, just to go on a walk, breathe a little bit, and um, just realize that this too shall pass down the road. So without further ado, here we go. How we're all going to look after 18 months of cutting our own hair. We have a couple kids that are asking for their hair to be cut right now, and I'm not sure they were going to want to go down this route. So anyways, um, and then this one. We, very near and dear to me right now. <laughs> Homeschooling is going well. Two students suspended for fighting and one teacher fired for drinking on the job. I've seen this in so many different variations, but uh, it is kind of funny because um, it, it does have its moments. We have a very structured day and I'll probably be sharing that in the coming weeks, but uh, very interesting to, to say the least. And a little bit about my background. Um, I have been feeding myself, um, feeding myself, feeding my report to the Orange County Register for years, since 2004, and in turn I have uh, ended up all across the United States and uh, even the Financial Times of London. And um, I'm a quantitative economics and decision sciences major at UC San Diego. I've been uh, in the business for uh, 28 years, almost 29 in a couple months. Orange County native, Capital Valley High School grad, nine kids, an avid runner, and I show this all the time. I brought six, she brought two, and uh, I adopted her, she adopted mine, and we had that bonus guy right there who's being potty trained as we speak. I can actually hear him off in the distance right now. But um, before I get in the macroeconomic outlook, I want to tell you a little bit about what I do. I have a housing report. I started out in Orange County, and now I have uh, an Orange County housing report, an L.A. housing report, San Diego, San Bernardino, and Riverside housing reports. Each one is tailor-made for that individual uh, county, as well as all the cities and areas within the county, so you know exactly what the supply is of any city, as well as what the demand is, and as, as well as... Uh, what the expected market time is. That's uh, if you place your home on the market, when would you expect to go into escrow down the road? So, as uh, I, I've talked about before, Logan Motoshami, he uh, coined the phrase BC before coronavirus. A lot of the macro charts still look like they're BC before the uh, before uh, coronavirus. They're, they're really strong. They show how strong our economy was. And we were definitely were not, uh, we were not pushing towards any sort of a slowdown or recession. It's quite the opposite in many, many different charts, especially the housing sector. Housing sector was on fire. But uh, like any good economist, we've got to look down the road. And uh, there's not a whole lot of data that, that's available, but there are spots now that are, that are indicating the slowdown that is to come. And one of them is the new unemployment claims. I don't know if you've uh, seen this, but these are these dots that, that show up and show you exactly uh, what the unemployment claims look like. They just spiked. They spiked to uh, close to 630,000 in just 15 states. That was this week. We're going to see this spike continue. They expect uh, uh, a backlog next week, and it'll be up into the millions. So unemployment claims, we, can, we imagine, is, is going to have its spike. Remember, it's coming off of an employment level that was nothing, and now suddenly we have uh, a lot of people are unemployed as a direct result of having to stay stay at home. Which um, I'm in, we're in California. California is now pretty much you need to be in the food industry, medical industry, grocery industry, and uh, or be uh, one of the first responders. Otherwise, you're pretty much at home. So the Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing General Activity Index, um, this is uh, manufacturing. It also had a drop of 12.7. So uh, you can see this is, this is uh, another indication that even manufacturing has slowed down. And a lot of people can't go to work, so a manufacturing is naturally going to slow down as well. And understand that the underpinnings of the housing market are extremely strong. Uh, 
we it's many people have compared because we we're at the higher higher levels of uh, median sales price to where we were prior to the great recession that uh, we must be in a bubble and it's absolutely not the case it is very very strong the fundamental housing market the fundamentals behind it that's the the uh the uh under underpinning of the housing market is very very strong Existing home sales actually hit a record, and this is probably one of the last really strong um, uh, prints that we're going to get. But you can see, actually, it was the strongest level since 2007. So that's, that's a long time. We're looking at, what, 13 years. So uh, it, that's where we were right now in housing. It actually just hit that in, in during, the, uh, during the start to 2020. So... That's, that's how strong everything was looking prior to the, uh, the coronavirus outbreak. But, uh, and many people have been asking me, are there going to be a ton of short sales? Are there going to be a ton of foreclosures? And I think that everything's going to go down in 10% uh, in, in 90 days from now. But I'm here to tell you that uh, this is that, that underpinning of that housing market that I told you about, the, how, the, all the housing stock. 20 to 30% of all homes that were purchased were purchased all cash. So uh, it's, they don't have a mortgage payment. So they're very, very strong. We also have had very, very large down payments. Um, we're just now starting to get to see more that were like 80, 10, 10, but we were seeing 20% down and, and higher and people that actually had to qualify for loans that had really good paying jobs. And uh, this is it, you qualify for a loan. It wasn't uh, easy. You had to put together all your paperwork that you had to prove that you could make the monthly payment. And but that, that was, the, this is the, the strength of the market versus the phony baloney stuff that happened before the Great Recession. That was like a circus. Uh, anybody could get a, a loan. Two dogs got a loan. Uh, a lot of dead people got loans. That's the difference between where we are now today to prior to the Great Recession. So it was a house of cards ready to, uh, to uh, come down last time. And yet, I, I'm looking at the data, and I'm looking at the data very, very carefully. And um, some of the things that, uh, I ha that I'm concerned about are the people that have had low down payments within the last uh, year that have had FHA loans and, and have very little skin in the game. Those are the people that I'm, I'm a little bit uh, weary of. Um, but understand, besides that, that, that being a little bit worried about those things, uh, there's a list of banks that are offering relief to customers affected by coronavirus. I went to Forbes and they're updating this all the time and the lenders list is absolutely growing. You have Bank of America, Capital One, Chase, Citibank, PNC Bank, and U.S. Bank. They are all, right now, uh, they, they all have different programs uh, to, to help out. Uh, if you're in a pinch, you can't make the mortgage payment, that type of thing. There's a lot of programs that are just now starting and there's going to be a lot more that will be coming and a lot more that will be mandated. So stay tuned. This is very, very fluid and there's more and more coming. You can only legislate so fast, but they've definitely got their, uh, got their eye on the ball. And because um, you have to understand, everybody that has loans, most everybody out there, they really qualified for them. They, they're really sound borrowers. However, now if they're, if they're unemployed and they're living uh, and they only have a couple months worth of reserves, well, they're going to be uh, hurting if, if, if they're out of work for too long. So uh, there, there, there will be uh, solutions to th this issue that is going to be creeping up. Well, I mentioned uh, Wells Fargo as well. Um, so uh, like I said, there's a list of banks. There's, this is, uh, if you want to go to uh, my... Uh, reports on housing at reports on housing on Facebook you will see that you can click on this and you'll see what I'm referring to as uh, the, the list of banks and that it is growing and all the different things that are doing during this coronavirus and we are in a low mortgage rate environment however there's a big asterisk next to it and the asterisk is this uh, well the low mortgage rate is the fuel that pumps and, and is the engine behind uh, our whole entire economy yet why are rates rising? And you have to understand, if you look at this, this is as of uh, yesterday, and this is from Freddie Mac, and this is a poll across the United States, and we see this, uh, we had a little increase uh, last week, but we had a gigantic increase, 3.65%, and it's, and it's even above 4% for uh, many lenders as well. 
And people are asking, how come? And that's because of the total chaos. The total chaos that, that's out there, and also uh, as a result of that chaos, there is, a, there is a safe haven, and that safe haven is bonds. So people park their money in long-term bonds. And uh, like I told you before, we watched the 10-year treasury, and it's even today, it's below one. I don't know where it is right this second, but it's below one. And really, interest rates should be closer to about 3%. Thus, there's that gap, and that gap, that b the gap between 10-year treasury and 30-year fixed rate mortgages is at a very large rate compared to where it's been in any time recently, and this is the gap right now. So why are they pricing in that gap? And uh, mainly it's because of coronavirus and, and the chaos. You have to understand, they've also done such a load of refinances that part of that, part of that load they can't handle anymore and uh, there are people working from home and it was already a tight labor market with, for lenders to begin with and now it's even tighter with not everybody showing up for work so it's made it even more impossible so you've seen interest rates that have been rising so uh, but the, the coronavirus is the main the main headline now that's driving everything and here are the facts I did this on Wednesday and we had uh, 200 in, now we have 266,000 cases it's up 24 percent in two days and then we're at uh, 87,500 have recovered. That's up 5% in two days. And then there were uh, there are 11,100 deaths. That's reported as of a couple hours ago. That's up 28% in two days. And the problem areas are Italy, Iran, Spain, Germany, U.S., and France. And, and we're actually surpassing France at this point. There are uh, 16,600 cases in the United States. That is up 113%. Understand that the reason why it's spiking right now is because we're finally getting all those tests out there and we're finally getting confirmations of what we kind of knew was coming. So it's just a matter of a couple of weeks before we start seeing that that curve stops and then we level off and that's where we can all breathe a, breathe a sigh of relief because that means that what we're doing is working. We're, we're, uh, we're not, that the curve isn't as steep and we're leveling it off. Uh, it doesn't mean that we're out of the woods, but it means that there would be, uh, that there is an end in sight. And there will be, and we'll get to that. And there are 300 million U.S. citizens. We all have to understand that. And we all have to do our part, all of us, including myself. I'm holed up in my house with lots and lots of children and a, and a loving, beautiful wife. And uh, there are 1,095 uh, cases in California. That is up 41% from two days ago. So you can see everything spiking. And I don't know if you've been following New York, but they probably have had the most tests, which is why their number is so high. I expect all the other states to, to uh, catch up to, to where New York is, and I don't expect New York to continue to, to go with the steep climate they have. So let's talk about coronavirus and the economy. And I've told you about what we're looking, looking for a scale and duration. Well, we already have the scale across the United States. And, and this breeds all these stats and all that stuff breeds fear and uncertainty of the unknown. But understand that in that, there, there, uh, there are solutions. One of them is quantitative easing. I expect over the next few weeks for interest rates to start slowly but surely coming down as the volume that they've been working on starts to dissipate a little bit so that interest rates can get back to where they need to be to help us fully function with low rates. Because when you do the math and the rates are 4% or 4 and 8%, it's not as good as where they were when they were at 3 and a quarter percent. So. That is definitely an evolution that we're going to have to watch where interest rates are because that will also, uh, how low rates get, uh, will help in, in ultimately in demand and people still wanting to purchase and maybe seeing homes virtually. And understand that Capitol Hill and our government is working on quite a bit behind the scenes. There's a lot of bills that are coming out and it's going to pro take time to process through all of them. I'll look at a lot of them and I'll mention the ones that are going to be very important, but understand that there is a lot of stimulus coming and it will be coming in waves because they can only legislate so fast. And then understand this, I talked about it before, uh, tax day, you can contact your CPA, but I know it, it now you do not have to file, it, file your taxes before. I heard it was file and then you pay later. Now I'm hearing you file later. It's now July 15th for uh, the, the Fed, IRS, and uh, for, the, for the state of California, it's right now June 15th. So I know that we have a couple extra months as well to get, done, to get it done here in, in uh, California.
all good news. And understand, we have some of the best hospitals and some of the best research. The school that my alma mater, UC San Diego, is a great medical research school. Uh, I know that they, there's a lot of funding going on right now for UC San Diego and their Center for Advanced Laboratory Medicine. There's a lot of smart people that are working around the clock to try to find something that will that uh, that that will help out in this in, in entire uh, epidemic that, that that we're dealing with right now. And housing, look down the road. Now I'm looking at supply. Remember I talked to you about that. We'll get into that in a second. And I'm looking at demand, the last 30 days worth of pending sales. And supply, what is happening with it? And demand, is there a change, an evolution of, of how many are going into escrow? Are uh, some falling out, that type of thing? And lower rates, when are we going to get them? And I've been following open houses and industry shutdowns. So far, so good as far as the industry shutdowns are concerned. So uh, we still have escrow that's working. We still have title that's working. A lot of them are working remotely, but they're still getting the job done. I know that the... Uh, the counties are also working a little bit more remotely, but they're still getting these things done electronically as well. And then, like I said before, we're watching the scale and duration. So uh, the Southern California market, this is something I want to go over. Still, housing is technically really hot. It's technically hot, and that's just the, the sheer speed that we're going. But remember, we were screaming down the racetrack at a very, very fast uh, speed two weeks ago. I even looked at the numbers last week, and they had not even changed much at all in that first initial week. And uh, so everything looked really, really hot up until, la uh, up until last Thursday. So we ha have a really hot housing market, and it has a lot to do with supply and demand. Now... Um, the Southern California housing supply has been a supply problem. The supply problem is the number of available homes to purchase. And uh, as you can see here, and I'll show you, this is where we're at. Now, this is an updated chart. This is Southern California's housing supply going back in time, going back from 2012 uh, on. And you can see that uh, back in 2012 and 2013, we had a very low supply for all of Southern California. This is where we are today, and the supply of homes is not that, that uh, high. And um, today we're at 28,816 homes. That was up 1% in two weeks. And usually this is where we start to see a little bit of lift, a little bit of climb, but we're not seeing that much of a climb, even with uh, cancellations and different things going on that are out there. Last year we were at 40,832. 42% more homes. That orange line and the blue line is the difference between last year and this year. So there were a lot more homes in the market last year and we're still not even up to there. You have to understand, in order for us to really, really slow down, we have to start to see the active listing inventory increase at the same time that we see demand uh, drop. Because even if we get demand dropping, if we get the active listing inventory staying the same, the market will slowly cool down. It won't be something rapid, rapid. And uh, so let's talk about Southern California housing demand. The Southern California housing demand was extremely hot. Like I said, up to last Thursday, it was screeching forward and now there's a crack. And uh, here's what the, uh, uh, the, the crack is. It is this right here. You see that blue line? This was pretty much all from the last seven days since I did it last Thursday. So pretty much this week is where we've seen this this evolution. Today we're at 15,360. We're down 8%. So the number of escrows, the last 30 days worth of escrows, is down 8% in the past two weeks. Not normal for this time of the year at all because we're just right now getting into our spring market. Today is actually the first day of spring, so we, we should have seen that rise continue. But instead we're down 8% in two weeks. Last year we were at 15,937. That is actually 4%. Demand was higher by 4%. Keep in mind, uh, the last report that I did, uh, th that I was doing a couple days ago, we, were, we, we had more than 1,000 more uh, escrows. So that's how much we came off just from a couple days ago. So it has really dropped considerably in the last uh, couple days. The normal change for this time of the year is up 6%. Instead, we're down 8%. So you can see that is a 14% swing. So you're really starting to feel the market slow at this point. And uh, this is what I showed you. This is from two weeks ago. This is LA County, Orange County, all this uh, Southern California, San Diego, San Bernardino, Riverside. This was two weeks ago compared to the, the prior year. 
And look at all these, 12, 14, 18, 12, 14, 14% year over year for all of Southern California, two weeks ago. And now today, this is this, the, the, the chart looking at this year versus last year, LA, 4% less demand. Orange County just has 2% more demand. I expect that, that that will fall within the next uh, few days. Riverside is down 14%. San Bernardino down 1%. San Diego is up 2%. Overall, for Southern California, down 4%. So that's where we're starting to see the deceleration of the market is in demand. In, in uh, uh, loan locks that people had, that they were floating that loan rate uh, out there, and now they have this, they, they can't lock because now interest rates have floated up almost a whole percent for some. And so we're, we're starting to see more cancellations. Cancel, canceled escrows is something that I've heard. I don't have an exact number. It's very hard to, to gauge at, at this point, but know that the number of homes that are, that are coming out of escrow on hold do not show and the number of active uh, listings on hold do not show. On Monday, I'll talk a little bit more about the number of home hold do not shows as well. I just have not had time in the last couple of days to track all of the numbers because it's happening so quickly. And another crack is the expected market time. And this is the expected market time right here. The expected market time is the blue line. And as you can see, two weeks ago, we were at a 51 day expected market time and uh, it was it was pretty hot. SoCal last year was at 77 day expected market time. And uh, so uh, it was a lot slower last year, but it was actually, it was starting to get hotter as the year progressed. And now that we were into March last year, it went from 90 to 80s to 70 and down to 77 days year over year. Southern California today is at 56 days. So we went from two weeks ago having a 51 day expected market time to SoCal today is at 56 days. So technically right now at this very moment, we're still in the hot seller's market, but the uh, if you do the tra 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 excuse me trajectory, you could see we're probably gonna follow a similar line to this green. And this green was uh, 2018, where it started to increase and started to increase and started to increase. I just don't know where it will go. It just depends upon if they're, what the sellers do. Do the sellers, uh, if they cancel, do they continue to be on the market? Or do they play? Uh, do do they place it on hold and wait this out a little bit? There's a lot of people that are asking a lot of questions that are out there, and and uh, so my my take on all of this is we're kind of going to see a little bit of both, because there still are some people that you know what this is still a really good time. We've got a good rate. Let's go ahead and close this thing. There are other people who are going to go. Well, you know what? I uh, I can't really afford it at 4.25%, uh, but I could at 3.25%, so I'm not going to do it. So it just depends upon everybody's situation. But if you have a low rate and you're locked in and you're ready to go, I say uh, go ahead and continue to go through it. There will be lots of programs available for people going forward to help get us through this entire, uh, th this entire period of time. So my market overview is this. I'm going to be looking down the road, continuing to look down the road, see whatever I see coming forward. Supply has a long way to rise, a long way to rise from here for us to really slow down. So, and I don't see that happening overnight. So those people that think that in 90 days we're going to be coming down 10% in value, that's not the way that the housing market works. Instead, sellers will hang on and they're more, more likely to just cancel or expire or they go into escrow. So. Uh, I, it'll be really interesting to see what happens to supply. Uh, demand, it just depends upon locked loans and uh, some people in the jobs that they're in, do they feel secure? Go ahead and pull the trigger if they're sitting on the sidelines right now. There's other people that are still gainfully employed and, and uh, are part of the solution this whole entire thing. Those people will continue to go through. So. Um, demand, we'll be looking at lower interest rates. When are they going to start to go back down? towards three and a quarter percent. That's something that I actually think that they should be at right around 3%. I was talking to Logan Motoshami about this and yes, we should be down a lot lower. So we'll have to see exactly when this happens. So that's something that we're gonna, we're gonna wait and see because even if, if we get interest rates that are down towards 3%, and on top of that, we have uh, we 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 uh, still have this coronavirus that's going on. There will be some people that will be uh, motivated to still make a purchase just based upon how low interest rates are and the portability factor. Because when you do when you start looking at what the monthly payments are for something like that, it is absolutely extraordinary. But 
that is a all of this is on the table as to how long that this thing lasts. And I, I imagine after we get past the next couple of weeks and things start to level off and they start coming down, we'll be boarding up in our houses and all that stuff where we'll start looking at real estate and things will start to, to get going again when we start seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. So we'll be watching industry shutdowns as well. So stay tuned for all that. On Monday, I'll do a little bit more of Q&A as well. Um, I can take a couple questions really fast. I'm looking at my uh, time. I wanted to keep it as close to a half hour as possible so I could take a couple questions. But please go to reportsonhousing.com to subscribe. And you get a month free if you actually sign up uh, today. And there is a coupon code. It's called Econ101. Enter in Econ101 at the coupon code and you get a month free. And I do have a business page at Reports on Housing. And uh, if you did uh, want to sponsor this in the future, let me know. I'd be more than happy to include you in that. And that's everything I have. But I will take, if anybody has any uh, questions, please ask. Uh, let's see. Buyers are, yeah. So pretty much everybody's kind of given me a state of the economy. But if you have an, a, an actual question, go ahead and, and uh, ask it right now. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. And, uh, and let's see, was this recorded? Absolutely, it was recorded. That's what I was doing when I was running around at the very beginning. How is the repo market affecting our rates? Huh. Well, that's a very good question. Absolutely is uh, starting to affect our rates. That's all part of the whole puzzle on the financial engine coming to a complete grinding halt. <laughs> Tom Ferry has great objection handlers for that. <laughs> What do you think prices will fall at all? Yeah, you know what? I'm, uh, and I'll take more questions uh, this coming up Monday. That'll be the last one I I, I take. But do I see uh, prices coming down all at all? You have to understand there's a real stickiness to pricing. We've been uh, pushing the pedal to the metal, and it's not all of a sudden we're sellers going to go, okay, you know what? I'll take a big discount. That's just not how it happens. That's why I don't buy the idea that 90 days from now we'll go 10% down in value. That's just not going to happen. Um, it takes a lot longer, and it takes a lot longer for the supply to go from where there's nothing in there to filling up the tank and then getting, uh, getting too high where it actually there are too many homes on the market. That is going to take time because you also have to have homeowners that are going to be coming on the market and I have a feeling that there's, there's going to be not as many homeowners placing their homes on the market. They're going to wait out those few weeks or month or they'll, they'll wait uh, uh, 45 days. That's what's going to happen down the road. So that uh, so you're not going to see a giant inventory spike as demand comes down. So if we even remain flat with supply, it's going to take a long time to, for us to get to where we are, a hot seller's market, all the way beyond 120 days, which is a slight buyer's market. You have to get upwards of 150-day expected market time for us to start giving back in price. And I, don't, I just don't see how we're going to get there really fast or anytime soon or at all even maybe this year. So we'll just have to wait and see. We'll have to play it. Uh, we'll have to do what we're all doing. We're just uh, uh, waiting this out uh, and looking to see what has happened with other countries. I've seen what's happened with South Korea. I've seen what's happened with China. Didn't even report that. Two days where they've had zero new cases. Those are all extremely strong. So uh, we, we, we uh, take a little bit of... Uh, uh, relief knowing that there is a, a, a duration to this and I know that if they continue to have zero cases I think it's for two weeks or something like that then their economic engine will really start to roll and that's where we could be down the road as well and we're taking some very good drastic measures to make sure that we keep this thing uh, down to a minimum and it doesn't affect a lot of human lives and we're all doing our part right now and I'm here to help out as well so uh, if you have any questions I will just continue to ask them in the feed and I'll be more than happy to answer some of those but uh, I will be spending a little bit of time with my uh, family as well so don't expect instantaneous uh, answers to the questions but I will be answering questions as uh, as uh, when I am able. So Stephen Thomas signing out with reports on housing. This is the episode two of Housing Debrief, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 3 o'clock p.m. Continue to join us. Thanks much.